Welcome everyone. Spooky season is upon us. Keep your eyes peeled for some special content throughout October, including some bonus videos. I'll be announcing Halloween content on the community tab and social media very soon, so make sure you're following me for updates. Now, on to the stories. I hope you're ready for this. I'm an 18-year-old female living in a small town in Michigan. When this incident took place, I had been working a few hours a week in a small pizzeria. It was in my town and I had been working there for about a year. When my boss decided to go on vacation, she and her family lived in an apartment below the restaurant and two other apartments were overhead. In order to get into these apartments, you had to go to the back of the building and down a sketchy set of stairs or the grass slopes where you would find her door and the stairs leading up to the apartments above. Beyond that there is a yard and then some woods. I think it's important to mention that there was absolutely no reason to be behind the restaurant unless you were trying to enter the apartments. Now, I usually worked with my mom because we got stuff done easily and I hate answering the phones. One night my mom was feeling ill so I had to work with another lady. She's very sweet, but not really efficient, so I was working hard to keep up and getting a bit agitated when she told me that we need Parmesan. I agreed to get it from the store just down the road if she promised to not make me answer phones for the rest of our shift. There was only about two hours left, which were normally pretty slow, so I guess it didn't matter that much anyway. As I was getting in my SUV, I saw a guy pull into the small parking lot with a beat-up car and park near the back. He was lanky and wearing oil-stained shop clothes, which was, and still is, totally normal around here. He got out and retrieved a bag from his trunk and headed down the slope. I know this guy wasn't a renter because I'd never seen him before, and the renters frequently ordered pizza. It was possible he was a friend of one of the renters, but that didn't seem right. It was about 9.30 at night, and one renter was a single mom, and the others were two brothers with mental health issues that were pretty antisocial. I was getting bad vibes, so I grabbed my knife from the center console and tucked it up my sleeve. Call me paranoid, but there'd been a lot of car fires and break-ins around that time, so I was nervous to go anywhere unarmed. It might have been a stupid thing to do, but I considered my boss a friend and didn't want this guy to hurt any of the renters or steal from any of the apartments. I decided to go see what he was doing, just in case he had any ill intentions. I got out of my car and walked quietly to the slope. There was motion-activated lights so I could easily see what he was doing. He was fiddling with an old key ring and trying to get into my boss's apartment. What are you doing? I asked loudly so that my co-worker could hopefully hear me through the open back door. He was startled but smiled and told me he worked for my boss's husband. He was there to feed the dog and let it out. His smile was creepy, the kind that a liar gives when they're trying really hard to convince you. My boss did have a dog and her husband did own a fabrication shop, so his story seemed to check out but I was still not convinced. I decided to go get the cheese and check again when I got back. Okay, let me know if there's anything you need help with. I tried to sound as normal as possible, but I was seriously creeped out. I hustled at the store and back to work. I'd been gone only about 15 minutes, and when I got back, surprisingly he'd gone. I was still feeling suspicious and bad for the dog who'd been shut in a good portion of the day, so I texted my boss when I got out of work. Fast forward two hours later, and I was on my way home. I got to my door when I decided to check Facebook. As I was scrolling, I saw something that made my stomach drop. It was a picture of my boss with her dog on the beach from earlier that day. I called my boss and then the police to make a report. It turned out 
The guy had been fired by my boss's husband earlier that week for making an inappropriate comment about his 19-year-old daughter and repeatedly harassing other female staff. This guy had planned some sort of revenge scheme but didn't know they'd left for vacation. His bag was full of tools and a couple of knives. During questioning, he told them that the only reason he left was because he thought I was watching him. Thankfully, he went to jail for that and a couple of other things he'd been wanted for previously. This still creeps me out to this day, and I hate to think of what would have happened if they had been home. I've been working at a small town bank for almost a year. Ever since the beginning, this customer has been obsessed with me and it recently escalated. Up until February of this year, he's been mildly harmless, mainly just asking my co-workers if I'm single or if I'm interested in him. Even after hearing I have a significant other, he did not let up. He would come in at least three to four times a week just to withdraw money from his account. At this time, I also had a second job at an animal shelter, and I stupidly told him. One day, after asking if we had a certain dog, he then gave me his number to send him pictures of the dogs we had there, which prompted me to tell him that we had a website. He just brushed that off and left. Needless to say, I never sent him any pictures. But he did keep asking until I told him it was against our policy to do so. Pretty harmless at this point, right? Well, around January, he spots my manager in a Walmart. He stops her and asks. Even though she's engaged, I see a connection in her eyes. And I know she knows we have a connection. Should I stop pursuing her? My manager told him he should stop. Mind you... He's been told by my other co-workers that I was not interested and engaged multiple times at this point. So I'm thinking it's all done, but come Valentine's Day, I get a single rose with a little note saying, Hope your day is great. Secret admirer. He called about twice that day to see if I had received the rose with the note. He was told that I did not. Then, a week later... He walks in and hands me an envelope with the words, Do not bend. And he said it was an engagement present, which I politely declined, but he insisted. It was a signed picture of some 49er. I'm really not a football fan. For the next couple of months, he's pretty quiet about things, but still asking where I was when I wasn't around. He would circle the building, I'm assuming looking for my car. I now have to park in a parking lot two streets over. Everything was quiet up until two weeks ago. He comes in to get money, and I unfortunately have to help him. When I go to hand him his money, he grasps my hand as I'm handing it to him, and just smiles and leaves. I don't say anything due to just being in shock. Then, last Friday was the breaking point. Just note, by this time, we already know what his handwriting looks like. I come back from lunch to a bouquet of flowers with a note sitting on my desk. It's a pretty long note, and it read, Do you ever think why your heart sparkles? Have you ever stopped to examine your heart? Do you ever feel a different love in your heart? When I look in your eyes, I feel alive. Be true to your heart. Is there a change in spark? Your beauty is mesmerizing, but it's not by my side. How do you know your love is right? When I see you, I think our love is right. Put all feelings aside and make sure your love is alive. I will always be inside. One day, I hope we lay side by side. I will always be waiting for you. It was creepy to say the least. Yesterday he walks in, and I was told by our HR department that I needed to tell him to stop. But when he came in, 
I just couldn't. I didn't want to make him mad because I watched too much Dateline and Criminal Minds. But my manager did, and he just said it wasn't him. He then goes home to tell his father, who then proceeded to yell at my manager. Needless to say, I think this will be the last time I see or hear from him, because they will be closing their accounts today. When I was old enough to be home alone, but still at that young age, I lived in a court in a lower-end middle-class neighborhood at the time. It was a small, developing town right before the boom of city growth, a place with one grocery store in the middle of town. So a pretty quiet place where kids would play to sunrise to late in the night with no real worries. To better explain, my court was a U-shape with like eight houses in it. There was one way in and out. I and my friend lived across the street from each other, right before the curve rounding of the U-Court. We were both three houses away from the exit of it. It wasn't a crazy busy street by the entrance. We could play in the main street for hours, and only run into the people who lived in the court driving in. That's how dead the area around our court was to the public. No one came around unless to visit our court. No one really had a reason to be driving or walking by our court because there were better ways to get to the other homes around us off the main busy roads. Going past our court is going out of your way to do so. I should also add, my friend's parents were not friendly and hated people coming to their house, so we only went over to my house or played in our court, which is important later. It was Halloween, and I decided to stay home and trick-or-treat my neighborhood with my friend Ashley, who lived across the street. It was late Halloween. The kids had gone home hours ago. The streets were dead silent, except for us. My family had left earlier to one of the rich neighborhoods to get the awesome chocolate bars with large king-size bars. After, they were going to go hang out at a friend's house, then get home late or spend the night wherever the night would take them, I guess. I didn't want to hang out with my younger siblings and their younger friends. I wanted to hang out with Ashley, so I asked to stay home alone. My parents agreed, with the promise I would go in and lock up the house as soon as she went in. I agreed. It was close to 10 or 11 at night. Our night went great, and it was dying down with her waiting for her parents to eventually call her in for bed. Ashley was chilling with me as we sat on the curb in front of my house, talking. Which, being in that preteen stage, was a common occurrence. When we noticed this middle-aged man walk past the end of our court, looking around as he passed, he paused, noticing us. The man slowed down and stared at us for a bit as he walked. No big deal, but something was off. I can still remember what he looked like, because I remember how odd seeing him was. Because we grew up in a small town where everyone knew everyone, and I did not recognize this man. He was a white average man with a beer belly. It was dark, but I could make him out under the streetlights as he casually passed our court. He wasn't a local. Ashley asked if I knew him as I shook my head no, before we obviously went back to talking. Something about him made her start to keep an eye on the court entrance. He's walking by again, Ashley would repeat, when she noticed him walk by again and again and again. That guy wasn't dressed for a long walk or a jog. He was wearing a tan jacket, dark blue jeans, and what looked like heavy work boots. I don't imagine going on a planned long walk with those, but we dumb kids ignored these red flags until the fifth time. That got us a bit freaked out. Hey, that guy passed again, Ashley frowned, as I turned my back to the entrance of the court as I was talking to her. 
He wasn't walking anymore. He was casually standing under the streetlight at the entrance of our court, on the same side we were, just staring. I remember how awkward he seemed, shoving his hands into his pocket, trying to act casual, except for the fact he just kept staring at me. We got creeped out as he kept looking around at the empty street quickly, then back at me before he went back to walking past our court. Something inside me told me to leave. Again, he didn't look creepy. He looked like a typical white suburban dad. It was his eyes. It was just staring at me. I'm creeped out. Let's go inside before he comes back. I remember Ashley breathing before we got up. We tried our best to ignore our fear since he was gone again. I walked her across the street to her home. I was that friend that was like the mom. I always made sure they got home okay before myself. Yes, you most likely see where this is going. I walked her to her house across the street before I headed home myself. Everything was fine. I quickly ran across the street to my house. Happy to get freedom, I turned the knob of my front door quickly trying to get into the safety of my own home, when I felt the knob refuse to turn. I remember holding my breath as I struggled to get the door open. That's when it dawned on me. I didn't have a house key. The door was never locked unless we were inside sleeping. This was before cell phones. My family had accidentally locked me out with no way to get a hold of them. I panicked. I was locked outside with the creepy man walking around. I was scared. I moved away from my front door. I remember trying to calm myself as I decided to go through the backyard and try our sliding glass doors, which again shouldn't be locked. I walked down the path of my front door to walk around the front of my house to get to the side gate. That was my plan. I remember stopping with fear. I remember my air being knocked out of me. When I noticed the man was stopped in the front of the end of our street once again. There was no way he did a full lap around our court to end up back there. He must have just pretended to keep walking. His eyes lit up as he smiled at me when he noticed I was still out. Raising his hand up in a casual high before he started to walk towards me. His steps towards me were casual steps, like he was just taking a walk, but he was staring at me. I panicked at his movements towards me and bolted across the street to Ashley's house, abandoning all attempts to break into my house. I remember thinking that Ashley's house is the only one with signs of life and I needed an adult right then. I remember running as fast as I could, getting up the stone step walkway to the door. I pounded in panic, pushing the doorbell repeatedly. Ashley opened the door, confused by the panicked look on my face. I'm locked out, Ashley, and he's coming. I remember screaming, trying to push my way towards her, scared shitless. I, I have to ask my mom. Those words broke me as she quickly closed the door, most likely not realizing the fate she was leaving me to. I remember crying as the door slammed in my face. In a panic, I turned around, trying to see where the man was, how close he'd gotten with my back turned. He had resumed walking the court when I assumed the door was open, now only a house and a half length away from me. The second I looked at him with the door closed, he stopped his casual walking on the sidewalk. He instantly started to run toward me, a diagonal, through the street, beeline towards me quickly. I remember the half turning to push the door repeatedly in what felt like a decade of fear, till Ashley's door opened, her hand grabbing my arm and yanking me inside the door, slamming the door quickly with a flick of a wrist locking the lock. I was in tears as she gripped my arm. 
I remember how desperately we moved to the side windows, quickly to see him. I remember how mad he looked at me as he stood inches from where I once was. He gave me a dirty look, his chest heaving as he slowly stepped back off my friend's porch, down the walkway. He shoved his hands into his pockets as he turned a face away from us and continued walking out of our court. I don't remember much after that. I remember breaking down, crying, as Ashley's mom came to my aid, realizing this was serious. I remember the cops being called and having my statement given. I also remember I stayed with Ashley until my parents got home shortly after the cops left. Ashley's dad walked me home and explained everything. I remember my mom hugging me and panic kissing me apologizing that my younger eight-year-old brother must have locked the door when they left because he was paranoid of bad guys. I don't remember being home alone after that until we moved years later into a new town. I can still remember this day clearly and I still can't figure out his intentions. Kidnapping, something worse. To this day, I still can't find a reason that sits well with me. I still get paranoid at night, especially of smiling strangers. I live in a small town and work in a neighboring town. I got off of work last night around 10.30 and was feeling pretty okay because I didn't have to work Easter. I was planning to go to Walmart, but wanted to get gas from a closer gas station because I had their rewards card. Now, living in a small town, there's not much to do around here, especially if you're between the ages of 15 and 20. So, going back at least three generations, the teens in this town spend their Friday and Saturday nights driving from AutoZone down 3rd Street about five blocks, turning onto the South Main driving two blocks, turning around in the pawn shop, and driving back the way they came. I know, boring, but it's all there really is to do that isn't illegal. So I went in and paid for my gas, and noticed a woman standing in the corner, glaring out the front of the gas station. I didn't think much about it, so I just headed back outside. The night was nice, so the drag was still filled with a few cars, and the auto zone across the street was still filled with parked cars of people around my age, or a bit younger. There was also a pickup filled with high school boys in the pump across from me, who were minding their own business, getting gas and snacks. Suddenly my chill mood is interrupted by the same angry woman who was in the store. She starts screaming in my face, I'm sure I got some of her spit on my face. Get your fucking ass home. I'm tired of all you fucking kids driving around at night. Get the fuck out of here, she screams, loud enough for the rowdy guys in the pickup next to me to go quiet. Oh, and she also said I needed to stop having sex and being a slut. I haven't done any of that. She keeps yelling about teenagers and how disrespectful we are. And since I'd just gotten off of work, I was sort of brain dead and blanked out until I heard my gas pump tick off and the lady was still screaming in my face, $13 of gas later. She'd worked herself into a sweat and was breathing heavily and as a somewhat overweight person myself, I could tell she was having a very hard time at it thanks to her size. My mouth just dropped open and I pulled the pump out of my tank. I mustered up the only response I could think of. Uh, ma'am, I'm 20. I just got off of work. I'm getting gas. Somehow, this crazy bitch gets angrier and tries to step forward when the boys in the pickup truck start laughing. Hey, lady, I'm 17, the driver yells. Then the four other boys, now out of the truck, got into the act, yelling their ages. Crazy lady, now having multiple underage targets, goes chasing them. The boys are screaming and laughing 
as this 60-year-old lady chases them around a truck. I thought, fuck this, and climbed into my truck. The driver of the truck looks at me like, now what? So I motioned for him to move. He honks and yells for his friends to jump into the bed. Three of them made it in, except for the bigger kid, who I think he said was 16. The old lady had grabbed his shirt and wasn't letting go. I had started to drive away, but stopped when I heard the 16-year-old yelling for her to let him go, while the other guys told her to fuck off. She started to claw at his arm with one hand and trying to push him to the ground with the other. Out of all the times for the cops not to be driving around, this was the time. I climbed out of my truck, mumbling to myself, no, 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 thinking I was going to have to save a kid who wasn't exactly too much younger than me from being killed by a crazy bitch. Thank God for the group of people across the street, because they noticed and started laughing and screaming at the crazy lady. She lets go of the 16-year-old and starts hobbling to the curb. The 16-year-old started to scramble, and I, Already being tall, built, and filled with adrenaline, check him quickly before throwing him into the cab with the drivers and telling him to leave now in my best mom voice. The driver nods and the other boys are still screaming about the crazy bitch while the 16-year-old just nodded and tried to hold back tears. He peels off and is gone. I climbed into my pickup because I see the crazy lady is coming back. I started up and drive around her, telling her to go fuck herself. I decided to go on the drag, mostly despite this crazy bitch. I drove off and went on the drag two times and saw the crazy lady on the corner of the gas station with her arms crossed, flipping off every teenager who passed by. I go by a third time and she's gone. I'm wondering if she went home or worse went to one of the parking lots where people parked to harass some more people. It was the latter. There she was, in the auto zone's parking lot, screaming at some girl before a guy got in between them. I stopped and watched, and was happy to see that they seemed to be handling it. And by handling it, I mean harassing her back. There was a guy who had a repurposed scooter slash cart, and kept doing circles around her. I drove off, and when it was getting late and time for curfew, I pulled over and talked to the group and the guy in the scooter. Apparently, she'd had enough, and just trudged into the darkness behind the gas station. I pointed out that the houses behind the store are known for meth heads, and the group agreed she was probably on something. I ended up hanging out with them the rest of the night, they were pretty chill people. The guy on the scooter was hilarious. I never saw those guys in the truck again that night. I just hope that the 16-year-old wasn't too scarred. So, a bit of backstory. I used to live in a very small town that was predominantly safe for kids. It only had some drug issues. Anyways, my house was located in a small and upscale part of town, which mainly housed families. There was a small pond with lots of green in the neighborhood that was about a five minute walk from my house. To get to the pond, you had to go down a grass hill. Neighborhood kids, including myself, would always go down to the pond for hours to catch frogs, skip rocks, and the kinds of thing kids do. Okay, so now onto the story. On this particular day, it was raining and pretty cold, so there were no other kids at the pond. My best friend, her brother, and myself decided to head down to the pond for a bit. After about half an hour, we see at the top of the hill a minivan pull up. We thought nothing of it, as there was a neighborhood mailbox at the top of this hill as well, and a lot of people stopped to get their mail. A man started to get out of the minivan, and I remember him being older, probably in his 60s. Another note, since we lived in a small town, 
Everyone knew everyone, or at least could recognize everyone. I remember thinking it was strange that I'd never seen this man before in town or in the neighborhood. He got out and just stared at us for what seemed to be forever. All of a sudden he yelled at us and said, It's not safe down there. You kids better come up. My best friend and her brother looked terrified, and I had this gut feeling that something wasn't right. We didn't say anything, and he continued to repeat that phrase. It's not safe down there. You kids better come up here. It's not safe down there. You kids better come up here. Our fight or flight reaction kicked in, and we booked it up the other side of the hill, which was only about a few meters away from him and the minivan. As soon as he saw us running, he got into his minivan and started driving slowly behind us. He followed us until we reached my house. Luckily, my garage door was open and my parents' two cars were parked inside. We hid behind one of my parents' cars and watched as he pulled to the side of my house and parked. My parents were inside but obviously had no idea what was happening. He stayed parked in front of my house for a couple of minutes until my dad came outside to take out the trash and saw the three of us hiding. I guess the man saw my dad and drove away, but as soon as he left, we told my parents everything. Even until this day, 12 years later, my parents still think we were being overdramatic and that it was a man that was genuinely concerned for our safety because of the weather. Nonetheless, we weren't allowed to go back to that pond anymore. I don't blame them for thinking this though, because the three of us tended to work things up a bit and be dramatic. But I knew from the way I had that strange feeling when I first saw him at the top of the hill that something was off. And to this day, I still believe that he was planning something. I grew up mainly in a small town in Texas. We lived in such small towns that everyone knew each other, and even if you didn't know someone's name, at least their face was familiar and recognizable. I also grew up with three other siblings, and we would all walk to and from school together. At the time of this memory, I was a young seven-year-old boy, and I remember it clearly being an intensely hot day. For reasons I can't recall, I was walking home alone that day, which was highly unusual and rarely ever happened. We didn't live too far from the school, but we would take certain tucked away routes that we perceived as shortcuts. This particular route was occupied by just a few houses, and most of them were empty. So, it was usually a very quiet, inactive area, with little chances you would even encounter cars driving by. I remember thinking it was so hot that day, and my backpack was so heavy, I couldn't wait to get home. Halfway to my house, quietly out of nowhere, I hear a car slowly driving behind me. After walking for a while, I finally turned around to see it was a small black car. I could barely see that there was more than one person in it. Being a very shy and anxious kid, I tried to ignore it and keep walking, but it continued to slowly trail behind me. Part of me thought that this was all a prank. When my family first moved to this small town, we would get teased a lot for being the only Asian family in town. After what seemed like the longest and most awkward minutes of slowly being followed, I was starting to feel a bit uncomfortable. So, I stopped walking and stepped further aside to see if they would just eventually pass me. Even at the time of this happening, I never thought I was in danger because this small, quiet town was known for being very safe. And like I said, everyone knew each other. The car then slowly drove up to me and rolled down its passenger window. There were three young men in the car. 
They weren't teenagers. They looked like they were in their 20s. I remember being caught off guard by not recognizing any of them, which was very strange for this town. The guy in the passenger seat then said with a smile, Hey, do you need a ride? Still being ignorant and not sensing any danger, I thought it was so tempting because it was so hot outside. Regardless of actually wanting to get into the car, I just said, What? He began to repeat, Do you need a ride? Then the guy in the back seat of the car began to open the door to let me in as he grinned at me. Once again, even though I actually wanted a ride home, I said, What? All three of them smiled and chuckled. The man again said, Do you want a ride? With a smile. At this point, I was so embarrassed and anxious, and once again just said, What? The silence in the background was interrupted by the sound of a screen door opening in the distance. I could see a familiar elderly woman just looking at us from her door. Looking back, I think she did this to let them know of her presence, to possibly scare them away, because this was obviously a very sketchy scene that she was witnessing. I turned back to look at the men. None of them were smiling anymore. They all looked so serious. The guy in the passenger seat said so seriously and abruptly, Get in the car. It almost felt like a scowl. I felt like I was being put on the spot, and I could feel a sense of urgency. So naturally, I became even more nervous, and once again just said, What? I then hear the screen door shut, and the elderly woman was now standing on her porch, making her presence even more evident. The men were all clearly very annoyed, and the man in the passenger seat then just said, Forget it, as the guy in the back seat shut the door, and they quickly drove off. Still being completely oblivious to the danger of the situation, I remember thinking as they drove off, Damn it, I could have gotten a ride home which is both funny and scary to think of today. I then turned to the elderly woman on her porch, and she gave me a gentle smile. I shyly smiled back and continued to walk home. It was years later that I realized how shady of a situation this was. I'm so grateful to that old woman who practically scared these strange men away. I was so close to willingly getting in their car and if she wasn't there, who knows what these men would have done when they lost their patience. It gives me chills today to think of what may have happened if I got into that car with those strangers. So thank you, kind elderly woman. To really understand the story, you need to know a few things. I live in Belgium, and at the time of the events, I lived at home with my parents, siblings, and my sweet dog. Looking back now, maybe my dog is a bit too sweet. Another thing to note is that my family is all over the place. Everybody is always busy doing something. Everyone has a very different rhythm and some days we live next to each other instead of with each other. So that's why at the time I really didn't know who was at home and who wasn't. We do love each other. So, in 2018 on a school night, I woke up to some noises in my room. I was confused and looked at my phone. It was around 3am. You know that feeling when you wake up very abruptly and don't know if you're dreaming or awake. That was kind of how I felt. There's a street light right at my window, so even though the curtains were closed, I could still make out some silhouettes and figures. As I had just woke up and wasn't really thinking, I thought the silhouette I saw in my room was my older brother. I was sleep drunk, you can call it, and started asking him what he was doing, but he didn't really react. I saw him walking towards my jewelry 
and I asked him again what he was doing. Again, my brother didn't respond. I was still laying in bed and began to feel angry because I had school the next day and had to get up early. And, as you do with irritating siblings, I started to curse him out. Get the fuck out, I have school tomorrow, I said. This time he looked at me, but again, didn't say anything. He started to walk toward my handbag and started looking in it and taking things out. At this point I was just angry with him and finally got out of bed. Mind you, the lights are still off. I walked towards him and asked him again, What the fuck are you doing? Get out. And I physically started pushing him slightly towards the door. Then he spoke. Where is the money? Where is the money? And like this very strange, almost fake accent. And seriously, I started laughing it off. I still thought it was my brother. Okay, I don't know if you're drunk or just being an asshole, but get out. By this time, we were almost at the door. He left and I closed my door. Finally, I thought as I went back to bed, but I started feeling unsettled. I got nervous and scared and started thinking it over. Didn't I smell cigarettes? My brother doesn't smoke. Why would he act so strange? So, just to be sure, I texted my brother, Where are you? His answer made my heart sink to my knees. I just left the gym. I'll be home in a minute. I immediately called him and frantically explained that there was someone who was just in my room. I started crying as I was panicking asking him what to do. He told me to call the police and stay in my room. As the gym was really close to our home, my brother got home literally a minute or two after. I was still upstairs on the phone with the police when I heard my brother yell a whole lot of curse words, followed with, get out. At that point, I was in the upstairs hallway because my sister woke up and was standing there too. My father fell asleep downstairs on the couch, so when he heard my brother scream, he immediately woke up and knew there was something wrong. He went to the downstairs hallway and saw my brother chasing the intruder. At this point, they were already at the front door. My brother managed to take a backpack from the intruder, but sadly he got away. My brother did get a good look at him though, so... The police came and I was actually in shock. While we were talking to the police, we had to describe the person. I told them exactly what had happened and how he looked. Due to the streetlight, I could only see the clothes he was wearing. So I'm telling the policewoman about his black pants and green hoodie. Then she abruptly stopped me. Green, your brother said light gray. That's the second time my heart dropped to my knees. There were two guys, not one. Both my brother and I were 100% sure about what we saw, so there had to have been two guys. They took a few iPads, phones, and wallets, but luckily my brother took the backpack, where there was a lot more of our valuable things that they didn't get away with. But... The burglars were kind of stupid because we still had Find My on all our Apple devices and they were still running. A day later, when we saw the location, my brother jumped in his car with my father while on the phone with the police. They waited for the police and then they went into the house where our stuff was located. They found one guy. He was crying and covered in his own piss and puke. They arrested him and he confessed. He said he was high on drugs and it was the first time he ever did something like that. He was very panicky and crying the whole time. My brother recognized him as the intruder he chased. So that meant the guy who was in my room was still out there. The guy snitched on the other guy 
but he was nowhere to be found. We all kind of got on with our lives, but I was really scarred. I slept with my lights on for more than a year, and every time I would be awake past 3 a.m., I couldn't go back to sleep. The intruder they caught went to jail for a year, and he's now in a rehab program. He sent us a letter or two. We kind of felt bad for him. He was traumatized too. But half a year ago, we heard that the second man was taken into custody. I was finally over it. I mean, it wasn't as bad as the beginning, but of course, I still got scared sometimes. But now they finally caught the man who was in my room. What we found out was unsettling. While the guy that pissed himself didn't have a record before this happened, the guy who was in my room was a very experienced criminal. He had multiple possession charges, theft, DUIs, and worst of all, assault and attempted homicide. The man I talked to, cursed out and pushed out of my room at 3 a.m., was dangerous, and I'm very happy to be alive. So, this was when I was much younger, in college. I was dating a girl that went to school in Providence, Rhode Island. It was a summer, and everyone was back home. My girlfriend's best friend had an internship back in Providence, and this girl had a four-bedroom, multi-family home to herself. The other three roommates were paying for their rooms, but they chose to stay home. I guess they could only get this place if they started paying rent, two to three months prior to the school year starting, but whatever. One weekend, my girlfriend asks me to go to Providence with her to spend time with her friend. She's lonely and has nothing to do on the weekends. We're only like one hour from Providence, so it sounds like a plan. We head down and we just chill for the night, drink, and we do some coke. It's about 2 a.m. and we decide to walk out and get some cigarettes. Nothing special. We walk by a guy on our way home from the gas station who's just staring at us. Kind of creepy, but no big deal, as it is 2 a.m. in Providence, and her house wasn't located in the best of areas, but certainly not the worst. We eventually all pass out, and me and my girlfriend head home the next day. The end of the week comes, and my girlfriend asks if I want to go to Providence again, but I can't as I have to work all weekend, so I decline. She heads down there, and her friend's boyfriend is coming to stay over, pretty much a repeat of the weekend before. They all drink, but end up going out and partying a bit. They are walking back after a night of drinking, when they enter the mudroom around 2am. They close the mudroom door behind them, and there's a guy, really raggedy looking, in there, waiting for them. He says out loud, get in the fucking house. They all turn around, and he has a gun. My girlfriend's friend has already unlocked the door to get to the house, and it's partially opened. Everyone is frozen in place, and the guy repeats himself, get in the fucking house. The boyfriend then steps forward with his hands up a bit, as to not seem confrontational, and he says, Hey man, calm down, it's all good. I don't know how the fuck this guy was brave enough to do any of this. As he says that, the guy shoots him. My girlfriend and her friend run into the house and hide under a bed. They can't hear this, but the assailant took off and didn't follow them back in. They don't know this though, and they're terrified, hiding under a bed, while the boyfriend is screaming for help. They think this psycho has come back into the house and is looking for them. My girlfriend told me they were both silently crying under the bed while the boyfriend screamed for help. And this is the worst part. Yelling out, help me, I'm dying. The neighbors heard the gunshot and screaming and called the police. 
They ended up catching the guy. He'd been watching the girls for weeks. It was the guy we'd seen watching us the week prior. The worst part was, the girl's boyfriend ended up dying. Like most people in Latin America, a fear of being robbed at the ATM was drilled into me at a young age. As a result, we always go to public places during busy times. We also eat dinner quite late, usually around 8.30 to 9.00 p.m. Anyway, last night I was short on cash, so I handed to them all. It was around 7.00 p.m., so just after people got off of work, but still well before dinner. It was already pitch black outside. There were quite a lot of people around, and the line for the ATM was too long. So I decided to walk around the mall and maybe get a snack. I got to the end of the mall corridor and saw an escalator, so I assumed there were more stores. But as I began to descend, I realized my mistake. I had entered a basement area full of random junk, like food containers, blank price tags, water bottles, and face masks. It was just a big room with the other side of it being empty. I looked around, trying to find the way back up but there didn't seem to be another escalator, so I walked through the room to an open door, which revealed a hallway with offices. The lights were dim, and the place seemed deserted, except for one door near the end of the hallway. Curious, I peeked into the room to see an office with the door pulled out and piles of sawdust. I saw a man painting the wall. It was too late. He saw me. What are you doing here? He asked. How did you get here? I'm sorry, I was trying to find a way back up, I replied. No, you weren't, he said. Do I look dumb to you? No matter, though. Come over here and tell me your name. I, uh, I have to go, I replied. What's a sexy thing like you in a rush for? He said. I bet I could make you feel good. Come on, there's nobody around. Give me a kiss, babe. I started running down the hallway at full speed until I reached the escalator again. The man didn't seem to be following me. I never heard any footsteps, so I assumed he stayed and kept on painting. A few very long minutes later, I found the up escalator behind a bunch of cardboard boxes. Soon, all the colors and sounds returned, and I was thrust back into the boisterous corridor. I don't understand why the mall made it so easy to stumble into the basement, or how people get out normally. The whole thing was just creepy. It feels like I stepped into a different dimension or something, like I was in a place that shouldn't be there. When I was a small boy of about four or five years old, me and the rest of my family, my father, mother, and one year younger brother, were living in an apartment in a very relaxed area of my hometown. Usually, we were well supervised by either my parents or a babysitter. On one evening, however, my mother went to her sports group and my father had to do an unexpected extra shift at work. My mother had missed the weekly training several times recently, so she really wanted to go and left my brother and me in front of the TV. If you ever want to stun children, that's the way. In an hour or so, my father would arrive. Out of routine, she reminded us to never open the door for strangers and the consequences of traditional German education. You basically tell your children scary stories about other children who did things wrong and how they died. Although, 
We really knew this by heart anyways. 10 or 20 minutes after she left, there was a ring at the door. Happily, I thought about my father coming home, so I got out of the stasis, bolted to the door, and more of a habit than critical thinking, I used our intercom before opening the door, asking, Is that you, Dad? A voice came back with a muffled, Yes, which was anything but my father's voice, which I told the guy on the phone as well. After a short period of silence, he now wanted to know whether I was alone, but I wasn't. So I told him only me and my brother were there. Again, there was a period of silence. Listen, I'm a friend of your dad's. We wanted to meet up this evening. I think you can just let me in, and I will wait for him to return. Of course, uh, I was in doubt. So I asked him about the names of me and my brother. He got the second one right, and mine wrong. But after I corrected him kindly, he just restated that he wanted to be let in. It was a really rainy evening. Over the course of the talk, all of my alarm bells started to ring. So I had to make really sure it was someone who knew us. I went to the living room and discussed the problem with my brother. We came to the conclusion that there was only one way to find out asking him quite the foolproof question what my stuffed dog's name was of course he couldn't answer that question and with that we finally told him what we should have told him from the beginning on that we won't open the door to strangers and that we will definitely call our mom if he doesn't go now he seemingly gave up after that as there were no further responses. When my dad returned, we told him about the incident. As everyone probably already guessed, he didn't expect anyone to come over that night or any of the following days. A number of years ago, I was employed as a small town cop in remote northern Australia. The town was a popular tourist spot, but crime was rampant. Breaking and entering an automobile theft was particularly popular. It was about 2am on a somewhat slow night shift. My partner and I were steadily patrolling the outskirts of town. The air was still and calm. It was your typical stuffy and humid tropical weather. The car's dispatch radio suddenly cracked to life, startling me. I hear the slightly distorted, matter-of-fact female voice of one of the regular dispatchers. There's something slightly off about the tone of voice. Our dispatchers are amazing under pressure, but you can hear the slightly rushed and breathless delivery of the incoming job. Whatever it is has shaken our seasoned dispatcher. The broadcast is to all units. It comes in as Intruders On, which is a shortened version of Intruders On Premises. The job details are just rolling in, but we don't even hesitate. Intruders On is a priority call. Dispatch fills us in as we race to the address. A young woman living alone had cranked up her air conditioner in her bedroom. She then snuggled under a thick doona for the night and texted her cousin for a bit before falling asleep. She woke, feeling something was off, to see the figure of a man standing in her room, watching her. Amazingly, she did not scream or give off a reaction that she was awake. She shifted as if she was still sleeping, and curled up further under the covers. She then blindly felt around for the phone that she discarded on her bed earlier that evening. Under the covers of the thick doona, she texted her cousin about a man standing in her room. Her cousin was the one on the phone, conveying everything to our call takers. 
The victim was conveying that the man was simply standing by her bed during the minutes that we were taking to get there. She could occasionally hear his breathing and movement when he shifted. We debated turning our red and blues on, but declined for fear of the intruder panicking and trying to hurt her. We get there a heartbeat after the other unit. In the darkness, I can make out the other two officers moving around the front of the house. As our car screeched to a stop, the headlights catch the man fleeing from the far side of the house. He's barefoot and bounding across the driveway when our guys on foot spot him. We join the chase. The guy is overweight and doesn't get far running down the road barefoot. We nab him and I'm surprised at how normal he looks. He's a bit scruffy, bogan, and unkempt, but still pretty average. He later admitted that he likes breaking into women's home to watch them sleep. The crime made him feel powerful, and he enjoyed invading other people's privacy and violating their sense of safety. He refused to disclose his other actions, but it was obvious that this had been going on a while. I'm a female, and at the time of this story, I was 24. Coming from a small rural city, I loved to study at big city universities. The campus grounds were always vibrant and full of activities, since we were in a busy neighborhood. In spite of being so busy, the homeless and addicts in this part of town were very considerate. In all my years of study, I experienced some bizarre and creepy moments like seeing two guys at 8am, pants down with a syringe in the back of their knees, next to the school entrance, and a homeless regular discussing their jail experience with me while I simply wanted to smoke a cigarette during my class pause. That kind of stuff. But nothing ever happened to the extent to make me feel like I was in danger. I was always aware of my surroundings, and tried to never put myself in a dangerous situation. But this event made me fear for my life. I was in between two classes and wanted to grab a bite and be able to study at the same time. One Thai restaurant near the campus had a second floor eating area that was usually quite calm. So I grab my food and make my way to the second floor area. This area is shaped like an L and I always used to sit at one of the tables in the corner of the L. The tables there were kind of hidden from the rest of the dining area, and it helped me focus on my studying without being distracted by all the coming and going of the other persons present. When I started eating, there were around five people eating and chatting. About 20 minutes after, the dining area seemed to clear itself. I am now all alone and focusing on my lecture. I hear a person coming into the dining area and taking a place near the entrance to the stairs. From where this person is seated, they are not able to see me in the corner of the L. I simply make a note in my head and continue to read. I began to hear the voice of a man talking to someone on the phone. I do not pry at first, since I still have 15 pages to read before my class in 15 minutes. Then I hear a clear. I will kill you, followed by a creepy laugh. The brief laugh added to the end of his sentence made me freeze. At this point, I'm on high alert and taking the time to analyze the situation. Are we really the only two people on the second floor? Maybe this threat is directed at me. Is this a drug addict from the neighborhood having a weird trip? Is he just deranged? Or is it a person joking? My mind is running quite fast between it's simply not as dramatic as it sounds to what the fuck. I need to leave since this person's making threats of killing another person. I'm deciding how I can leave this situation while I hear him menacing the other person on the line repeatedly with threats that he will kill them. Further, he adds threats like if they don't believe him, they will have to wait and see for themselves 
as well as what he's planning to do with her body afterward. The more this man spoke, the more his voice filled with hate. His creepy laugh in between each threat made all of this too serious to be fake. I don't know if it's because I was frozen for quite some time, but the room seemed so heavy with all the hate this man was sputtering. In some ways, I couldn't move without cutting some tension. As soon as I realize this, I tell myself that enough is enough. I need to leave before this man realizes that I was there all along. I slowly put in my earbuds and began moving my head to a fake song. My goal was to imply that I didn't hear anything from his conversation, but at the same time, be able to hear him. I get up from my chair, which alerts the man that there is indeed someone else in the room with him. So I am now standing. I am able to look at the man, so I give him a casual nonchalant glance to be able to read the situation. When he heard me move, he stopped talking. I can now see his mouth wide open with a surprised expression. I glance back to my backpack and I put back all my books and personal effects without looking panicked, all while bumping my head to my imaginary tomb. The man is still holding his phone to his ear and hasn't peeped out a sound since he realized I was there all along. All his hate just switches to pure shock and disbelief that he's threatened another person with death while having a witness all along. Kind of the way people can be quite nasty on the internet, hiding behind their screens, but silent and polite in real life. Now the tricky part. I have to pass him by the access to the stairs, so I continue with my fake vibing and silently singing to my music without looking directly at him. My body was tensed all the way to the stairs, since I knew the man was still frozen in place and looking at me. As soon as I passed him and accessed the stairs, I was now able to breathe again and escape from this heavy room. As mentioned before, the neighborhood was filled with people in precarious situations, so there was always police patrolling around this area. As soon as I came out of the restaurant, I spotted a cop car just across the street and went to share the incident and location of the creepy murdery man upstairs. They took my phone number in case they had more questions for me, since I had to head to class. I never received any phone call afterward. I never passed this man in the neighborhood either after this event. Even if this was very creepy at the moment, and it could have gone differently for me, I always think of the poor person on the other side of the line receiving all these threats and having this man in their life. I hope they are safe and that this man never acted on any of his death threats. I live in a medium-sized apartment building in a fairly major city. While the neighborhood I live in is more on the safe side, gun violence is very high in my city, and we have a big trafficking problem. Despite this, I feel pretty safe going out, especially close to my apartment building, where it is mostly well lit, and I am friendly with a few of the regular homeless people However, last night, I got a reminder that my safety is not guaranteed, and I have been pretty shaken ever since. Last night, around 12.20 a.m., I asked my partner if he wanted to share a joint with me, and when he declined, I locked the apartment and went downstairs myself. The exit I take spits me out to the main street, where there is still the occasional car driving by at this time. Usually, this type of human presence comforts me walking late at night. But tonight, a lone black, dark blue van approached in my peripheral and started to drive slowly, matching my walking pace until I rounded the corner and the van was stopped by a stoplight. I found it very strange at the time, 
but the van was on the other side of the street, and there were one or two other cars, so I sort of brushed it off. Around the corner, there is a little food truck area with a bunch of picnic tables. They have, like, Christmas string lights hung up throughout, and a few other ambient lights that are kept on throughout the entire night, but it barely illuminates the area. As I'm walking past the picnic tables, I notice a large man, dressed in dark clothes, sitting alone at one of the back tables. He was wearing a hood or a hat, so I couldn't really see his whole face. But his eyes, they followed me as I walked the border of the picnic area. My usual smoke spot is behind that fence on the other side of the picnic area. I was a little shaken by spotting that man and also didn't want to upset him by smoking near him. So I chose a slightly further spot against the side of a construction vehicle. I lit my joint and start puffing away while reading something on my phone. I soon start getting this really uneasy sensation It felt like all my hairs were standing up, and I got the most intense goosebumps I've ever felt. My phone was still playing music, but as I turned it off, I heard the shifting and rustling of gravel on the ground behind me. I swung my head around and saw a man reaching towards me with huge hands. I only caught a glimpse of his face before I fell to the ground. His eyes were wide, bulging, and extremely dark. They terrified me. His mouth was agape, and he was basically snarling at me. He scared me so bad that I fell to the ground, stumbled, and broke into a run, all in like one second. I ran for a few seconds before I peeked behind my shoulder and saw him just a couple yards behind me. At this point, I saw it was definitely the man who was sitting at the picnic table, and I now saw he was wearing what looked like a dirty fishing hat. He had shoulder-length, dirty, light-colored hair, and was way taller than me, so at least six foot. He was definitely gaining on me, as I had lost ground by turning around and I am not in the best shape to begin with. I was about to reach the first entrance to the building, but the issue was, one, there were double doors at this entrance that closed quite slowly, and two, the only way up was an elevator, so if he got inside with me, I was shit out of luck. I kept running, taking my chances with my running ability versus quickly opening doors ability. I kept running along the other side of the building to get to the second entrance. This one is just two single doors, which open up to the stairwell up to my apartment. As I'm nearing this entrance, I see another man who appears to be speed walking directly towards me from the opposite direction. I should note that throughout all of this, I have been hearing the growling or snarling of that first guy behind me. And as the second man gets closer, I hear he is also growling. I reach the keypad and unlock the first door, then quickly slam it closed behind me until I hear the lock click again. The second man reached the door first, and I saw his face more clearly as it slammed against the glass window of the door. He was also tall, with longer hair, and I remember he was wearing overalls, but I mostly remember his wild eyes and his teeth that he gnashed at me right before I turned away and opened the second door, then booked it up the stairs. I didn't even stop until I was in my apartment, had all the doors locked, and was under the covers. I think in retrospect, I didn't hear any sign of them following me up the stairs, but I was so convinced they were still on my tail. 
I think the only reason I got away from them was that they didn't know about this side entrance to my building, so they didn't expect me to keep running past the main entrance. I got up to get my inhaler as I was having a near asthma attack at this point. I peeked out the window and my heart sank. I saw the same van that had creeped me out earlier parked across the street from the entrance to my building. The entrance is like right below my apartment window. I then looked down to see three men pacing along the side of the building, including the two that had chased me. I ducked down, fearing that they would see me. A few minutes later, they start shining flashlights into the windows of apartments. At first, I think of course it's only my apartment, but after a while, it's clear that they're just searching for me. At this point, I try to call my building manager to let him know about the situation. He then set out a text alert to our entire building. I was so paranoid that another innocent person would run into them, so I called the police. They told me that they were on their way and to stay out of the window in case these men were armed. A few minutes later, the men were spooked by a faraway police siren and get in the van and peel away. I think it was from a different 911 call though, because when the officer arrived to our building, the siren wasn't on. I spent a long sleepless night thinking that they'd come back, but they never did. I'm definitely going to avoid being alone at night from now on. I asked one of the homeless guys that I am friendly with if he saw anything suspicious last night, but he said he hadn't. They couldn't have been residents because they didn't leave after management sent that alert to us. The part that sticks with me the most is the growling and the intense look in both of their eyes. I have no idea if they were on drugs or what. They never said any words to me or each other. I haven't heard any updates from the cops, but it's only been a few hours and they didn't seem that interested in my statement as the van had disappeared when they left. This happened a few years ago when I was 21 and had to travel by bus regularly. It was a normal day. I left my home, took the bus down to the city, and waited at the bus station for my next bus. Suddenly, a girl greeted me. She was cute, so I thought I may be lucky. I greeted her back. She asked if my name was D, which was pretty confusing and scary. I said yes, probably already with some confusion in my voice, because she giggled. She asked if I took the bus often, how long the travel was, where I lived, and all kinds of weird stuff. What struck me was how quickly she just nodded and moved on to another question. My younger self thought maybe she's just in a rush, or the kind of weirdo which talks too fast. I even forgot during all these questions that she knew my name already, but she never told me hers. When the bus finally arrived, she said goodbye and left. She didn't even take the same bus which I realized after sitting down. Suddenly the weirdness struck me again, and I realized how much she asked in a way that seems more like checking a list instead of learning something new. A few days later, I met my best friend at the time. He was stressed, so I asked what was going on. I knew he had some trouble with his parents, so I thought it might be something along those lines. He told me instead, that his ex turned into a stalker. He never gave her a key, yet she suddenly stood in his flat when he got home from work. She messaged and phoned his parents in order to get an explanation, to talk to him, to accuse them of talking him into a breakup. She also visited him during work and made a scene. His boss being the person throwing her out of the building 
and threatening to call the police. I remember the girl from the bus station. I described her, even though I could only vaguely remember what she looked like. And he nodded and told me that was her, while going pale. I asked how she knew me, and why she wanted to talk to me, which he couldn't answer. She knew my name because he talked about me once, but never told her more than that. We didn't learn how she learned so much about me, and we never want to because he had it harder than me. He got terrorized at home by her, which drove him to the decision to finally call the police and get a restraining order. We never again talked about the situation. The reason they broke up was her accusing him over and over again of cheating. She was the one breaking up, but also seemed to go insane at the same time. This happened like three weeks ago. It was 6.30 p.m. I was on my way home from school and I encountered this one homeless man who wanders around my suburb carrying a sack along with his two children. One of his children approached me and tried to hold my hand, begging if I have any spare change. And of course, I think giving food is better than giving money, so instead of giving them some coins, I gave the kid one pack of my biscuits from my backpack, and the kid was okay with it. But his father wasn't. He gave me a disgruntled sideways look. I just walked away feeling uneasy, and also sprayed some alcohol on my hands after that, since the child's hands were seriously dirty at the time, as he just scavenged from a nearby trash can right before that moment. Two days after that, I encountered them again when I was on my way home around the same time. It was on a different street in my suburb. I was going home after visiting a friend, and this time, they were begging really hard for money. I didn't have any money or food I could give them, and the man asked me if I really didn't have any money. That made me feel startled and gave me some serious chills. He started approaching me really slowly asking if he could check my backpack or my pockets. So I started moving away from him, but then his two kids started grabbing my bag to prevent me from escaping. But I managed to move fast enough that their hands slipped away from my bag. They started crying really hard when they stumbled on the ground. Their dad started screaming at me as I escaped, called me selfish and heartless for doing that to his kids. I tried contacting the local authorities in my area to see if they'd witnessed the man and his kids on the street. They said that they're quite familiar with him since they wander around quite frequently. After reporting to them what happened to me, they said they'd patrol the area to see if he came back. However, ever since that day, I haven't seen him again. It's kind of a scary thing going on. My girlfriend of about three years now, who I met after she was in recovery, had just rebuilt her life when we met. We've had plenty of ups and downs, but we love each other. Anyway, she mentioned about a year or more ago that she was being followed to work by black SUVs when she was living with me on two or three occasions. They were black GNC vans with tents, Fast forward to this morning, the same van was driving towards her on her way to the train, and the driver rolled down the passenger window and said, I'm so happy we finally found you. She kept walking and crossed the street where the van wouldn't be able to get next to her. She called me and was in tears after she ran to the train station once she thought she was out of sight of the van. We're not sure what's going on. She claims her ex is a single male, raising multiple kids that aren't even his. She said he also sold drugs and knew some big-time guys who trafficked drugs. She said this to me on WhatsApp after she got mad that I kept asking, 
why anybody could be following her. She also claims that they've asked if she would move things across borders, which she claims she never did. She also snuck in the fact that the drugs sold either by her ex or his friends have killed people in the past, but that was over four and a half years ago. The only other thing I could think of is she claims she was abducted by aliens as a kid, but that's kind of crazy to me and I've always dismissed it in my head as maybe bad dreams she's had as a kid, but they wouldn't come back in an SUV if they wanted to talk to her. She's always very level-headed and honest about everything. There's no reason she would make any of this up or lie to me, and she was in tears on the phone. She's leaving work at a weird time today to pick me up when my shift is over, which she would never do, as she feels unsafe now. So here's my theory. She moved into her new apartment and her address was changed on the registry within the last three months or so. It's a very upscale place as her job pays her very well and she holds a supervisor position. She also financed a nice car about a year ago. I'm thinking that maybe she dropped off the map and appeared at an expensive residence with a nice car and now they're asking questions. I'm not sure what I would rather it be at this point. Nobody's gonna pop out of a black tinted van with good news. It's not like they're following her because she has an unclaimed lottery ticket or something. Any advice is appreciated as this kind of thing is freaking me out. I'm really trying to stay cool about the situation. This happened after my father died. I was living with my mother at the time. I think I was about 15 years old. One dark, stormy night, at about 3 in the morning, I heard the doorbell ring. Strangely enough, my mother and I were still awake. We were upstairs, chatting in my room. We looked at one another in a shocked silence. Who would call so late? My mother asked. I pressed the intercom button and said, Yes? Through the intercom, we heard a woman's voice. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry to disturb you so late at night. Could I stay here tonight? By the sound of her voice, I guess she was around 40. She had kind of a deep voice. She sounded very nervous. A part of me suspected it might be an act, but I couldn't be sure. Something was off though. I asked, are you a friend of my mom's, and waited for her reply. No, no, that's wrong, sorry. I live in the neighborhood. Well, I lost my job actually, so I don't have anywhere to stay. Can I stay here, please? Since her story was all over the place, I didn't believe it at all. Well, since you don't know my mom and I don't know you, I'm afraid, uh, you know. Maybe it's a no, I said in a panicky tone of my own. My mom tapped me on the shoulder and decided to take over the conversation with the stranger at the door. I didn't know what the hell was going on, but I wanted to take a look at this person on the doorstep through the window. I got a clear look at her. She was about 50, I'd say. She was wearing very bright clothes and she had dyed blonde hair. This is quite rare in Japan. I think I would have noticed her if she lived in our area. We weren't living in a big city or anything. She was wearing a white hat, a bright green blouse, and a red and white polka dotted shirt. She was also holding a paper bag, which looked full of things. I couldn't see what though. Something about her really spooked me. I ran back to my mom and said, Do not let that woman in. Something is wrong. She's really scaring me. I was rambling out of fear and I can't remember that well. You've come all this way without an umbrella. I can loan you one you can use to get back home or to a friend's house if you like. My mother offered the stranger. I was listening to the conversation as I was hiding in the living room out of sight. She freaked me out so much I couldn't even look at her. 
I was amazed by my mom's bravery. It sounded like my mother opened the door and was talking to the weird woman. What the hell was she thinking? Then I heard her say in a stern voice, You are not coming in. Get back to your own house. My mother never yells, so it was a shock. I heard the door handle and the chain rattling. I was so glad my mom kept the door on the chain. I heard my mom screaming at the woman to get away from our house, while the woman was throwing her body weight against the door. There I was, a 15-year-old, crying like a baby. I could hear my mom pushing against the door, and as I finally came to her aid, it slammed shut. She edged backwards from the door towards me. My mom was out of breath, and she whispered to me, just like you thought, she is crazy. This is pretty crazy, right? Sorry about tonight. Are you okay? I told her I was and asked if she was okay. She turned to me and smiled and said, I'm fine, just don't worry about this. It's late, get some sleep. Then the doorbell started ringing like mad and the door handle was rattling again. It sounded like the weirdo outside was hammering on the door with her fists. I was sobbing again, pleading with my mom to call the police. It's fine, she said. Get some rest if you can. I'll deal with this. I pleaded with her, but she ordered me upstairs. I did as she said. I got ready for bed, but there was no way I could sleep. I was too scared. I tried to listen to what was going on downstairs. After about half an hour, the noise from downstairs finally ceased, and the long night was finally over. Ever since then, I've been terrified of late night callers. Five years after that night, I started living alone. My mom popped around to my new place one night, and we got to reminiscing. That rainy night with the nutcase at the door, came up in conversation. I remember crying a lot that night, mom. It was the scariest thing that happened to me, I said with a smile. Ha, huh, I remember it well. You don't get worried living alone these days, she replied. No way, mom. I was just a kid back then. I'm a different person now. Well, in that case, maybe it's time I told you what really happened, she began. I only didn't tell you at the time because you were bawling your eyes out and you looked so terrified. I noticed something weird after I opened the door to get rid of her. You know how it had been raining that night. It wasn't a light drizzle, it was a downpour, right? Well, that woman did not have a drop of water on her, so I knew her story was fake. Also, when I cracked the door a bit whilst it was on the chain, I saw a guy with her and a car parked down the street. Now here's the scary part. The guy in the car was wearing a mask and one of the men in the car was holding a baseball bat out of the window. I want to share a story about the time my family's house got broken into. It was a really creepy experience. It happened one dark October evening when I was in high school. Back then, whenever I got home from school, I would go up to my room and lie on my bed and read manga. On the day of the break-in, it was just me in the house. My family had gone shopping. So I shut myself in my room and lost myself in my books. It was great. I needed the toilet though, so I left my room and that's when I noticed something strange. The smell of tobacco smoke. This was really weird since I don't smoke and no one in my family does either. I'd never smelt this smell before in my house, so I went in search of the source of the tobacco smell. I began my search in my little sister's room as I noticed the door was slightly ajar. I pushed the door open and switched on the light, and in 
my little sister's room was a full, grown man. This guy was in our house. He was holding his shoes in one hand, and he was rummaging through my sister's drawers with his other hand. I guessed that he had taken off his shoes so that he could move around more quietly. My heart stopped, and my skin went ice cold. Somehow I managed to ask, What are you doing in here, despite my fear? He started babbling, creating random excuses, none of which were plausible. It was really crazy. My heart was racing now. I didn't know what to do, so I just grabbed him by the arm. I didn't want him to escape. He didn't resist or complain. He kept silent. Luckily, my grandfather lived close by, so I led the intruder with me to his house. When we got there, my grandfather called the police. After some time, the police arrived and they filled us in on the details after they interviewed him. It turns out that the man lived in one of the apartments across the street that looked directly into our house. Things got really creepy when he told the police that he'd been in our home several times. He said he liked to break in even when there were people in the house. Despite the police interview, the man broke down and confessed. He said the main purpose of his repeated trespasses was the fact that he was drawn to my sister. He had some sort of obsession with her. He told the police that the day I apprehended him, he was looking for some of her underwear to take back to his apartment. He said that the only reason he picked my sister was due to the simple fact that she was his type. He confessed to entering other people's homes too, anyone who was his type. He said that the only reason he went unnoticed by the occupants was because he was very careful not to disturb anything or steal a thing. No one knew he was coming or going. It seemed that this guy had an understanding of our family's movements, our schedules, that kind of thing. It was clear that he'd been watching our house and us for a long time. He knew how to get in easily, must have searched for a weak point of entry. He had done this many times without being caught, and my guess was that he began to get careless, which was how I was able to catch him. I only caught him due to the cigarette smell. I can't tell you how horrifying it is to find someone standing in a dark room in your house when you're at that age. I literally have no words for how frightened I was. Of course we threw away all of my sister's underwear. We decided to get her new clothes too. I mean, how could she feel comfortable wearing anything that man had touched? I think my sister has suffered mentally with this. It's a thing I don't speak to her about. I'm just glad I caught him. Who knows what else he might have wanted to do. Maybe stealing the clothes was just the beginning. I don't want to think about it. This happened yesterday while both of my parents were at work. For context, my dad's a mailman and my mom is an RV saleswoman that is always on her feet so neither can pick up their phone very quickly. I do have an older brother, but he's at college two hours away, so he doesn't matter in this story. I was sitting in the living room with my dog when I heard people talking in the hallway. This isn't unusual because I live in a third floor apartment and there's a noisy family next door that brings over friends a lot. This was also a Saturday, so I wasn't expecting pure quiet. I obviously just ignore the talking, since it's not that loud and I had headphones on. But my dog perks up and walks towards the door with an alert posture. The hair on his back was sticking up, which he never usually does, so I got concerned and took my headphones out. This is when I heard the voices from before, which were two adult men yelling very loudly in the apartment hallway. I got a bit freaked out, so I pushed my dog away from the door, made sure it was locked, 
and crept towards it to make sure they weren't near my place. When I looked out the people, I couldn't see either of them, and because the only blind spot in my people is directly to the right, I knew they were at my neighbor's. As I'm leaning against it, my whole front door starts shaking because the men are banging on the neighbor's door and still yelling things like, shit-talking fuck, come out, talk shit but don't want to show. It's at this point I grab my dog and pull him into my room while I try to call my dad, who luckily picks up in a few rings. He told me that I should just stay in my room and stay quiet, and that they would go away. I did stay in my room for the most part, but I called my best friend, just to have someone on the phone because my dad couldn't stay on. My room is the furthest from the door, so they definitely wouldn't have heard me whispering to my friend about the situation. After about five minutes, I stopped hearing the banging. I told my friend I was going to check if I could hear anything. When I got out there, I didn't hear the banging anymore, so I got closer to the door. I looked out of the people and I could see one of them pacing. I freaked out again and started creeping back to my room. When I heard one of them say, maybe we got the wrong house. This threw me into a full-blown panic attack since my identical apartment door is five feet away from my neighbors and all the others are down a hallway. If they didn't even know the exact number and they obviously weren't scared to bang on an apartment door midday, they would probably come to my door. So again, I pulled my dog into my brother's room since it had a lock and I camped out there. I waited for about 10 minutes before I heard the banging calm down again. I couldn't hear any talking from my position. I was texting my friend who also lives in the complex what was happening, and that's when the banging started again, this time on my door. They went through the same routine, but this time they were much more aggressive. I could hear them slamming, kicking and hitting my door, all while yelling for some guy to come out. I called my brother later and he told me there's no way he could have been involved in this, especially because he's 19 and those men had to have been at least 25. I called my dad again and in his panic, he told me to go out of the room and tell them there's no guys in the apartment, that I'm just a girl, but I just told him I'm going to call 911. I know they weren't just looking to break down a door and that they were targeting this at some guy who did them dirty, but I still didn't want to go out there because, one, even if they're looking for some guy, I don't know if they have weapons, and in their enraged state, they might just call bullshit, but they still have the info on me. Which leads me to, number two, I'm a high school freshman girl, five foot four and 116 pounds. Quite frankly, I have no fight in me. For example, I'm terrified of knives and guns, so I brought a bowling pin from my room for protection instead. Plus I was mid-panic attack. I would stand no chance against two adult men at my door. So letting them know I'm a teen girl home alone isn't the best idea. I sat next to my locked bedroom door with my dog as I called 911. I tried to keep him quiet this whole time, but I didn't want to be suspicious. During this situation, I made sure not to talk to my friend when I was out of the room, to keep quiet and tiptoe everywhere so they didn't know anyone was home besides the dog. I'm pretty sure they didn't know anyone was home, even though they said, we know you're in there, during their yells because earlier they were unsure if they even had the right place. I was on the phone with 911 for a few minutes before I heard light knocking at my door, making me realize I was in so much shock I didn't even know the banging had stopped. The operator said it was the cops, so I ended the call and answered the door. The officers told me the guys took off right before they got there and they asked me a few questions about male family members, 
and if they could have any correlation with this. Call me paranoid all you want, but I can't help but think someone comes into my house while me and my roommates are away, or even worse, home. My housemates and I are all female. We're all 21 to 22. We recently moved into a house near our college campus. We do not have keys, and instead a code that we use on our doors. We have three pretty calm pets. It started with weird individual experiences. Random small things going missing from public spaces, but things that were easy to overlook. I also want to mention, we're all very close and honest with one another. The things missing couldn't even be stolen. And the house isn't big. There's only so many places the items could have been, you know? Then there's been occurrences where we'd leave with all the blinds open, come back, and then they'd all be closed. Blankets that were left out, but are randomly folded. It's been getting spookier recently. One of my roommates was home alone and heard a thud. She looked around. All the pets were in the living room with her. She then hears footsteps and calls out to us. Of course, we didn't answer. So she grabs the pets and loads them into her car because she's hysterical and convinced someone else was home with her. To top it off, the other day, I was trying on some clothes and kept getting a hint of something foul. After much investigation, I realized it's the very shorts I'm wearing. Confused as fuck, I rummaged through my drawer and out of my three rows of shorts, the row in the middle smells and is stained with urine. I was so disgusted. When I tell you, we have pondered every possible explanation from our pets to even ourselves. The smell wasn't that of a cat or dog. There were no rat droppings. I immediately registered it as human urine. After doing all my laundry, I noticed two identical pairs of my underwear were missing, nowhere to be found at all. We've been trying not to talk about the situation because it seems like when we do, we ask for something bad to happen. So we refer to it as Joe, or just text if it's urgent. We ordered cameras on Amazon, and we'll be setting them up later. One outside the front door, the other outside the back. And something I forgot to mention, our house is a duplex-style home, so we have two floors. The first floor, where my bedroom is, has two points of entry, not including the windows, but we do keep the windows locked and their screens. The second floor has two bedrooms, a laundry room, and the attic door is in between all three. We are also the first tenants ever in this house. Someone did do a sweep of the attic today. An interesting thing to note, there was blue paint dried and crusted on the entryway of the attic, and on the floor, and the bottoms of a few bins we have up there. We couldn't find the source of the paint, and we don't own paint of any kind. As of right now, the missing item count is at 5, with two of its newest additions today when I got back from class. Two earrings from two different pairs were in a small container on my dresser. I won't count it just yet though, since I give myself 24 to 48 hours in case I misplaced something. I'm not sure if this is relevant, but something to think about. We met a neighbor who lives a few houses down maybe a month ago. She was very nice, but grew fond of us really quickly and started to become so comfortable that it made us uncomfortable. She knocks on our door almost every other night to hang out, which has even resulted in us being completely silent and turning off the lights so she thinks we're away. She has my friends on social media, but I never followed her back because the last time she came over, she was hinting that she had a crush on me and kept trying to touch my hands and thigh and was trying to stay overnight. I never said anything about it. I just ignored that it was happening. 
She also had mentioned multiple times of how she notices when we leave or come back. She's learned the sounds of our cars and horns and knows which cars come back based solely on the lights at night. She definitely remembers and knows our routine and has even said to me, I notice you're the one who's gone the most. It's kind of weird, but to be honest, she seems too nice to have ever done anything dangerous. Maybe she's just lonely. So, the goals for the week. Set up cameras tonight, buy a bedroom camera, change door codes, write incidents with dates and journal, give written report to police department, booby trap the house. My roommate and I lived in a duplex house less than a block away from the university in town, so our street was always very busy, with cars or people walking to campus day and night. The town is pretty small, but the side of town that our house and the college are on is considered the bad part of town. There were a few homeless people here and there, but I got to know most of them when I worked fast food. So I was familiar with the people that were considered shady around town. Until this situation, I'd never had any issues with safety in the six years I lived there. And I regularly walked to work and school, as I didn't have a car and I have extreme driving anxiety. About nine to ten months ago, I was in my living room around 10pm watching TV, and my roommate was in his bedroom playing video games. I'd ordered a pizza a little earlier in the evening, but some of my order was left at the store, so I called the pizza place to ask about it, and they told me someone was coming to bring the rest. While I'm sitting in the living room, someone knocks on my door very loudly. It startled me, but I had assumed it was the pizza man because I was expecting them anyway, so I answer the door. When I open it, there was a middle-aged man I'd never seen before standing on my porch in a large puffy jacket, a black beanie, and big heavy boots. I can't remember his face too well because it was really dark and I was shocked and confused. I said, Hello? And he took a small step back and said, Hey, is your husband home? I didn't really think about my response because I was so confused about what was happening, so I said no. Then he said, oh, well can you come outside and help me with something real quick? This immediately told me to get out of the situation, so I told him to hold on, closed and locked the door, and went to get my roommate. I explained what happened to my roommate and he went outside to see what was going on. The man had fully vanished. It had been less than five minutes since I'd closed the door and got him, so the man must have either run away or gotten into a car with someone and driven away. I felt like a crazy person because I was the only one who'd seen him, and my roommate just told me not to answer the door that late unless I knew who it was. I was really shaken up after this incident, so I called my boyfriend, crying, to tell him what happened. He came over to make sure I was alright. Things were normal after that, but I was still very cautious at night time, because I didn't want this to happen again. Flash forward to about mid-February, it was about 8pm. I'd been sitting in my living room, watching TV, when someone knocks on my door very loudly. Once again, I'm startled but I go to answer it. When I open the door, I'm almost certain that it's the same man from the last time wearing the same clothes. He starts to ask me again if my husband is home. I immediately slam the door in his face, lock it, and get my roommate again. Once again, the man is gone by the time my roommate gets outside. I'm absolutely terrified at this point. For it to happen once seemed like a fluke, just a weirdo at my door, but twice. 
My roommate and I go back and forth about calling the police, and finally I decided to do it. I called the non-emergency line, filed a report, and a cop came to my house and took the description. They said they'd keep an eye out for him. She asked me if I noticed anything specific about him, like if he had weapons or if there was another car out on the road, but I didn't see any of that. I left a note in my duplex neighbor's mailbox to tell them about it, because I knew there was a girl around my age that lived there, and I wanted to make sure she was aware for her own safety. But she told me that he'd never come by her house, and she'd never seen him. Nothing like that ever happened again prior to my moving out. But it stuck with me for a long time, and honestly still makes me wary to this day. Now, I am very cautious when I leave my house, even in the daytime. It made me feel paranoid that I was being followed or targeted for sex trafficking or something. Thankfully, I now live in a completely different city with my now fiancé, and I feel a lot safer. This took place when I was six or seven. My parents were out late at a bar. My older sister, who was 14 to 15 at the time, was watching me. We were in the living room watching TV. It was fairly late, around 10 to 11 p.m. We lived in a nice neighborhood at the time. Police never had to come through or deal with lots of issues, low crime rate and great schools. We were both dozing off when suddenly, it sounded like somebody was trying to aggressively open our door, like as if someone was being chased and they were desperate for shelter, pounding on the glass, jiggling the doorknob, and ringing the doorbell all at the same time. They were doing it very aggressively. It lasted probably 10 to 15 seconds, and then stopped abruptly. My sister made me go up to the front door and see if it was my mom and dad, possibly drunk coming home. It wasn't. There was no one there when I checked. Freaking out, we called our parents, who were only a little concerned, but then said they were on their way. I remember us running upstairs and locking ourselves in my room, since my downstairs floor was full of giant windows that we left the curtains open to. Fifteen to twenty minutes later, it happened again, pounding, trying the doorknob, and non-stop rapidly ringing the doorbell. I was hoping that it was a ding-dong ditcher the first time, but twice. I feel like you wouldn't want to go back to the home in fear of having the cops called on you, or having someone looking out for you. I don't know though. My sister called my parents again, who were still on their way. We were both too terrified to check the door. It stopped abruptly again. I don't know why my sister didn't just call the cops herself. My parents got home. They still didn't know if it was worth calling the cops or not, in fear of it ending up being a waste of time. Obviously my parents aren't very smart, I know. And since they weren't there, they didn't hear how crazy it sounded. It wasn't just a knock and a doorbell ring. Whoever was on the other side of the door was putting what sounded like all their strength into trying to get into our house. We all went to bed, my mom assuring us that it wouldn't happen again. 3 a.m. rolls around, and obviously it happens again. This time was the most aggressive. My mom screamed to my dad, call 911, which he did while running downstairs to see who it was. Then it stopped. My dad got to the door probably five seconds after it stopped. Again, nobody was there. The cops patrolled our house that night and drove around the neighborhood often for a few days after those incidents. From what I know, nobody else had reported something like this happening to them in our neighborhood. I still don't know what it could have been about. 
I always told myself it was just some kids messing with us. But the fact it happened multiple times and was so aggressive just disturbed me. I had trouble sleeping in that house for months. If you wanted to ding-dong ditch, why would you try to open the door relentlessly? And why target the same house three times? That just seems like a lot. God knows what would have happened if the door was unlocked. We were little girls and definitely wouldn't have been able to defend ourselves had it been malicious. Our cars were broken into a couple months after this, so it is possible that it could have been related. I'll never know, but whether it was, innocent or not, Whoever desperately wanted to get into our home that night, thanks for the lifelong trauma of being home alone. So this was about uh, 15 years ago or so now, possibly more. I'd have been 13 to 16 years old. At the time, I lived in a fairly inoffensive 1970s to 80s style council housing in a small city in the Midlands. Nothing rough about the area, but certainly nothing flashy either. Both of my parents were at work. I was on holiday from school, hanging out at home. Around midday, there was a knock at the door, and two men were stood there. An older guy and a younger guy, one in a hoodie and dirty jeans, the other in a coat. They both kind of look like mechanics, oily clothes and the like. Hey, can I help? Yeah, we're from British Gas. We're here to do some meter readings and maintenance work on the boiler. Oh, okay. I wasn't expecting anyone, I said. Ah, well we called earlier. Was that not you we spoke to? No, it must have been my stepdad. Ah, well it shouldn't take too long. Okay, cool, I replied. Something didn't feel quite right about the whole thing, but it wasn't entirely unrealistic that my parents had forgotten to give me a heads up, that there'd be some guys coming over. It couldn't hurt to let them in, right? But for whatever reason, right before I did so, my gut completely took over and it was like I became hyper aware of everything. It was as though I suddenly analyzed the whole situation in milliseconds. Two guys, no uniforms, generic looking van parked outside, clearly not native English speakers. And the final cherry on the top. I looked them both up and down to see what equipment they had with them. One of them had a hammer, the other had a fucking 8 inch screwdriver. That was it. Okay, I'm just gonna call my stepdad and see if he's coming home to meet you. He only works up the road so it won't take him long if you need him here, I said. No problem, they replied. I close the door, lock it and immediately get on the phone to my old man whilst watching these two guys from the window. The hammer guy is having what looks like a really heated conversation on the phone, and screwdriver guy has gotten back into the van. I explain the situation to my stepdad and get hit with two very concise instructions. Don't let them in and lock the door. By the time I'd gotten off the phone to him, they'd gotten their van and left. I reported it to the local authorities, and that was that. It wasn't until afterwards that I really speculated about what may have happened if I'd let them in. I'm assuming a robbery, but equally, they could have been scouting properties. Or, of course, they could have just fucking killed me or kidnapped me. It still makes me shudder to think about it. But that moment when instinct took over will always amaze me. It really was like going into autopilot, and though I fortunately not needed to since then, I have had absolute trust in following my gut 
from that day onwards. I don't know how or why we get those feelings of unease, but they're sure as shit worth listening to. When I was 13 years old, my family was robbed by my mom's ex-best friend. They, before robbing us, had broken in multiple times. One time they left the front door open, and another my mother opened the laundry room door, and as she did, the back door closed. Having these experiences, we changed the locks and made sure that we locked the doors at night and armed the home alarm. The following year, the events in this story happened. For a bit of context, my family lived in a really bad area. People had been robbed, and some people had even been assaulted or jumped. My father is a truck driver, so my mother, brother, and I were usually alone there. My mom is someone who really enjoys watching the ID channel on TV. In fact, my town was once featured on one of the ID channel shows. Our town has such a high crime rate that a human trafficking ring was busted, and my mom's ex-best friend knew someone that was busted. The city I live in is the most dangerous in the country, and just yesterday we drove past a car dump. Earlier in this year also, we've called the cops twice, once because we heard someone in the backyard, and another because we heard gunshots. One night my brother was asleep in the living room, I was in my room, and my mother was in her bedroom. I was on my phone at 1am, because insomnia sucks. Suddenly I heard the doorbell being rung frantically. My mom is a light sleeper, so she got up and went to the front door. She looked through the peephole of the door. I had walked out as she was standing on her toes looking at the front door. She was speaking to the guy behind the door. I heard a muffled guy's voice say, My car broke down and I need to use your phone. My mom cleverly replied, I'm sorry, I don't have a phone. She grabbed her phone after saying that. The man insisted and tried to open the door. He got angry because it was locked and started shouting. I went to my brother and woke him up. I told him to be quiet and we ran to the bathroom. My mom eventually joined us. We hid in the bathroom together and held on to each other. It felt like a lifetime in that bathroom. My mother was on the phone with 911 the entire time. I was making sure my brother remained quiet. When my mom was told the cops were there, she made sure that when she heard them knocking, that it was them. She gave her statement. I couldn't hear it all because my brother and I were in the bathroom together. My mom told us we could get out, and I immediately called my dad in tears. He answered, and I was crying so hard that my father couldn't understand me. I gave my mother the phone. A while later, the cops came back. They told my mother that they got the guy my mom described, and he was playing on his phone. They said he did not have a car. His intentions were probably to break in and rob us, or maybe worse. My mom watching the ID channel saved our lives. So I live in a middle class neighborhood outside of a larger midwestern city. My neighbors are nice and very tight knit. We watch out for each other's pets, kids, and vehicles. There's been reports of a prowler making the rounds on social media through late April and May. I tend to take these with a large grain of salt because this area skews older and they tend to be very paranoid about strangers. Let's cut to last night. I was up later as usual on a Saturday, playing through the Subnautica sequel. I play with my headphones on my PC because it's very immersive. I got up to grab a beer from the fridge and plug my phone into charge. I have a roommate, but he's a long-haul trucker and is currently on the road until next week. As I went back to my PC room, I noticed my back porch light was on. This isn't too unusual, as there are plenty of cats, possums, or whatever around here. I still decided to check it out. 
I poke my head into my sunroom, directly behind my PC room, and I see the outline of a tall adult at the glass back door. I shut the door and locked it. I had a momentary freakout and went to grab my phone. I hear someone try the sunroom door, which thankfully was locked tight with a deadbolt, and I start to panic. I go to grab my handgun from the gun safe. In retrospect, I should have dialed 911 right then. I retrieve the firearm and go back to the sunroom. I see someone sulking off into the night, and a wave of relief washes over me. I come to my senses and call the police to report a potential break-in attempt, followed by my roommate, who luckily was getting a late dinner. I told my roommate what happened and asked him if anyone told him they were stopping by. He laughed and told me that somebody definitely just tried to break in and that no one he knew would drop by unannounced at midnight and just start trying doors. Anyway, the police show up about five minutes later and ask the usual questions. They then relate to me that the reported prowler on Facebook is very much real and is broken into several homes and vehicles in the area. They told me to call them right away if anything like that happens again and to make sure my windows, doors, trucks are all locked up tight. It was a freaky encounter and it has definitely made me feel very uneasy. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. If you can't get enough Mr. Revenant content, check out the perks of my Patreon and channel membership. Details are in the description. I want to say a special thanks to those already supporting the channel. So huge thanks to Des, Tina, B, Snowball Rathina, Amanda Jane, Paula, Dina, Vabby Debs, Patricia, Amber, Krista, Brenda, Absinthe Alice, Art and Gaming, Pretty Girl 215, Christy, Crafty Kel, Kay, Borderline Betty, Spider's Web, Ooh La La Andrea, Lady Drackard, Sue, Monique, Sean Gorman, Sam, Zepp, Mr. Backwards, Sarah C, Casey, Linda, Austin, Tegan, Chris and Donna, Lil Smart, Jennifer, Gabrielle, Misanthropia, Ryan, Estara Rain, Rudy, Rochelle, Christina De La Rosa, Noosh, Fire 05, Jody, Sarah P, James Gargano, Gemma Allen, Monica Levelace, Alex, and Courtney Maxwell. Thank you all for listening, guys. I'll see you in the next one.